junk dump back and today we're going to talk about Oldsmobile starting and charging systems. I'm going to go over the wiring for those from 1970 to 1972. I've seen a lot of uh, strange choices in wiring through the years so I'm going to give you uh, an idea of what the stock point style was supposed to look like. I'm going to then go over upgraded HEI and upgraded alternator like 10SI and 12SI alternators. And then I'm going to go over the wiring as you upgrade again to MSD ignition. So let's start by going over the components that we're interested in here. We have the ignition coil, the voltage regulator, the horn relay and battery junction, the ignition switch, the ballast resistor, which you're only going to use if your car is missing the original 1.35 ohm resistance wire, and the point style distributor, the alternator, that's going to be an OE style, the starter solenoid, and the battery. Starting with the main ground, that's the negative battery terminal to the engine, and I recommend a 4 gauge wire for that. Then we're going to connect our secondary ground, that's going to go from the negative battery terminal to the fender, and you should use a 10 or 12 gauge wire for that. The starter cable then goes from the positive battery terminal to the starter solenoid, and that's on the battery terminal. And again, a 4 gauge is recommended for wire size. And now your main power cable, that's going to go from your positive battery terminal to the battery junction terminal, and that's located on your horn relay. That should be a 10 gauge wire. Your alternator output wire should start at your battery junction and connect to the alternator BAT battery terminal, and that's a 12 gauge wire. The voltage regulator 12 volt supply comes from the battery junction to the voltage regulator number three terminal, and that's a 12 gauge wire. Now you wanna connect a fusible link to your battery junction. That fusible link is gonna be a 14 gauge fusible link. And your main power will connect to that fusible link and then go to the main power junction. That's a 12 gauge wire. From your main power junction, you're going to have the ignition switch power, and that's going to go from the main power junction to the ignition switch, and that's a 12 gauge wire as well. Now, your fuse box battery power comes from that main power junction to the fuse box, and that's a 12 gauge wire. And finally, the lamp switch gets power from the main power junction to the lamp switch, and that's a 12 gauge wire as well. Before we go too much further, let's examine the starter solenoid terminals. So let's start with the battery terminal. That's the one on top, and that receives the main power. And the power there is what's going to be fed through the starter once the solenoid is engaged. You have the R terminal, and that's called the relay terminal. This terminal is only used on points ignition systems and it basically bypasses that resistor wire to give you a positive coil power when you're cranking. Then we've got the S terminal on the right, which is the switch terminal, and that activates the solenoid, which engages the starter and also kicks out the armature that's gonna engage it. Back to the wiring, now we're gonna do that ignition resistor bypass. That goes from the starter solenoid R terminal, the relay terminal, to the ignition coil plus terminal. And that's a 14 gauge wire. Now the reason that this wire exists is to bypass the resistance wire in your ignition system when you're cranking over or starting your car. And that's the only time that this wire receives power is when the key is fully engaged to the starting position. Now the switch terminal on the solenoid is gonna be wired from the ignition switch SOL terminal to the neutral start and backup switch. Now from the neutral start and backup light switch to the solenoid S or switch terminal. And that again is a 12 gauge wire. And now we come to the ignition power. You're gonna start at the ignition switch. It's the ACC1 terminal to the engine and dash connector where you'll find a 12 gauge pink wire. And first I'm gonna show you how to wire up your ignition system without the 1.35 ohm resistor wire. There's a factory resistor wire. I believe it's pink and black. Um, in some cases I've seen this removed or bypassed. So if you find yourself without that wire, this is how to make that connection. From the engine and dash connector, you're going to bring that 12 gauge wire to the ballast resistor. 
and then the other terminal of the ba ballast resistor to the ignition coil positive terminal, and that's a 12 gauge wire. Now let's remove that wiring and go back to the original OE 1.35 ohm pink and black resistor wire. That pink and black resistor wire should be in the engine and dash connector to the ignition coil positive terminal. Now you'll notice that we're not using the ballast resistor anymore. That's because that 20 gauge 1.35 ohm resistor wire is taking the place of that resistor. And this is how the factory would have wired it from day one. And now that points distributor wire goes to the ignition coil negative terminal, and that's a 12 gauge wire. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about the voltage regulator. Now there should be a 24 gauge 10 ohm resistance wire and a 20 gauge generator lamp wire that connect to the generator and forward lamp connector from the ignition switch and the generator lamp. Now, from that generator and forward lamp connector, you're going to wire that to the voltage regulator number 4 terminal with a 20 gauge wire. Now, for the alternator field relay circuit, we need to take the voltage regulator terminal number 2 and connect it to the alternator R terminal with a 20 gauge wire. And the other wire in the alternator field relay circuit is the voltage regulator F terminal and that goes to the alternator F terminal, and that again is a 20 gauge wire. And that is what the stock starting and charging system wiring should look like in an Oldsmobile from 1970 to 1972. Now, if you're not looking to keep your car original and you want to upgrade its drivability, then upgrading to an HEI, an internally regulated alternator, like a 10SI or 12SI, is an excellent upgrade. To begin, you're going to need to remove the ignition coil, the voltage regulator, the distributor, the ballast resistor if somebody happened to put one in, and the alternator. And then you'll want to get an HEI distributor and an internally regulated alternator like a 10SI or a 12SI. Start with the main ground, and that's a negative battery terminal to the engine. Typically there is a head bolt with a post on it for you to connect to, and I would recommend using a 4 gauge wire. Your secondary ground is going to go from the negative battery terminal to the fender, and there you should use a 10 or a 12 gauge wire. Now for the starter cable, you'll take the positive battery terminal to the starter solenoid battery terminal, and that's a 4 gauge wire. Your main power cable is going to go from the positive battery terminal to the battery junction terminal located on your horn relay. That should be a 10 gauge wire. Now the 10 and 12 SI alternators put out a lot more amperage than the original one, so for your alternator output you're going to want to go from the battery junction to the alternator battery terminal with a 10 gauge wire now. And for the alternator sensing circuit, you'll want to connect the battery junction to the alternator number 2 terminal, and you can use a 14 gauge wire here. Some people short this wire to the back of the battery terminal. It is best to connect it to the actual junction itself. And at the battery junction, you're going to want to install a fusible link, and that's a 14 gauge fusible link. And the car's main power will come from that fusible link to the main power junction and again should be a 10 gauge wire now. And the ignition switch will get its power from the main power junction and that should be a 12 gauge wire. And the fuse box will get its power from the main power junction to the fuse box with a 12 gauge wire. The lamp switch will also get its main power from the main power junction to the lamp switch battery terminal and that should be a 12 gauge wire. And the alternator lamp circuit will get the generator and forward lamp dash connector brown wire to the alternator number one terminal, and that only needs to be a 16 gauge wire. So we're going to take a closer look at the alternator terminals on the 10 and 12 SI style alternators that are very common for upgrading. And on these alternators, there's a large post on the back, that's the battery terminal. And then you have the terminal number one, which is labeled with a one. And terminal one is the indicating terminal and that connects to the charge lamp. This is where you're gonna install that diode if the engine continues to run after you turn the key off. But if you use your wiring properly and your resistance wires are still in place where they should be, then it shouldn't be a problem. Then we have the number two terminal and that is the sensing terminal. And that connects to the battery junction point 
the amp output of the alternator is going to be determined by the voltage that it sees on this terminal. And that's why it's wise to put it at the junction and not just the back battery terminal. And all these alternators have a test hole, and if you ground that hole to the case, you can full field your alternator and use it to test the full output. Now back to wiring, we have the starter solenoid. The ignition switch SOL terminal is going to connect to the neutral start and backup switch, and then from there it's going to connect to the starter solenoid S, the switch terminal, and that should be a 12 gauge wire. So let's take a look at that starter solenoid and see how this has changed from before. Now in this case, you're using the battery terminal again, just as you did before, and you're also using the switch terminal, the S terminal, the same as we did before. This time, the relay terminal is gonna be left blank, and you're not gonna connect anything to that anymore because we don't have points anymore. And while we're at it, we'll take a closer look at the HEI terminals as well. A stock HEI distributor will only require the ignition or the battery terminal, that white connector on the end, connected to an ignition source for it to function. And then you have the TAC signal, which is labeled TAC, that would connect to a tachometer if you have one. So we'll talk first about the ignition switch and the IGN1 terminal connecting to the engine and dash connector. And then from that connector to the battery terminal on the HEI, which is not an actual battery terminal, it's just labeled BAT, but you want ignition power there. Also, it's important to note that you are not using the OE resistor wire that's pink and black. You want a 12 gauge pink wire if you want it to look factory and not a resistance wire. And now you'll connect that TAC terminal if you have a tachometer with a 16 gauge wire to your TAC. And that's it for upgrading to HEI and an internally regulated alternator. And that, that really is a cleaner install. You have many less wires running around and also your drivability goes way up. Those voltage regulators from the factory don't last very long. They cut out all the time. Um, so it's a good idea to update to an internally regulated alternator if you're worried about drivability. And again, if you don't care if your car is not 100% factory anymore. And if you want to upgrade your ignition system a little further, you may upgrade to an MSD6A box. And I usually attach those underneath the dash and then run my wiring through the firewall for a nice clean install. Start with the main ground, and that's a negative battery terminal to the engine, and I would recommend using a four gauge wire. Your secondary ground is gonna go from the negative battery terminal to the fender, and there you should use a 10 or a 12 gauge wire. Now for the starter cable, you'll take the positive battery terminal to the starter solenoid battery terminal, and that's a four gauge wire. Your main power cable is gonna go from the positive battery terminal to the battery junction terminal located on your horn relay. That should be a 10 gauge wire. For your alternator output, you're gonna to wanna to go from the battery junction to the alternator battery terminal with a 10 gauge wire. And for the alternator sensing circuit, you'll wanna connect the battery junction to the alternator number two terminal, and you can use a 14 gauge wire here. And at the battery junction, you're gonna to wanna to install a fusible link, and that's a 14 gauge fusible link. And the car's main power will come from that fusible link to the main power junction, and again, should be a 10 gauge wire now. And the ignition switch will get its power from the main power junction, and that should be a 12 gauge wire. And the fuse box will get its power from the main power junction to the fuse box with a 12 gauge wire. The lamp switch will also get its main power from the main power junction to the lamp switch battery terminal, and that should be a 12 gauge wire. And the alternator lamp circuit will get the generator and forward lamp dash connector brown wire to the alternator number one terminal, and that only needs to be a 16 gauge wire. The ignition switch SOL terminal is gonna to connect to the neutral start and backup switch, and then from there, it's gonna to connect to the starter solenoid S, the switch terminal, and that should be a 12 gauge wire. And when upgrading to an MSD box, you're gonna to wanna to remove the HEI distributor's stock ignition module and condenser unit. So the only thing you're gonna have is that pickup in the center of it, and the connector that comes off from it. You'll connect that connector to the harness 
8861 that comes with an MSD box. And that's going to connect as shown here where the white is going to connect to the purple and the green wires are going to line up in that connector. And then feed it out through that grommet and exiting your HEI just as it's shown here. And start with your MSD main ground. This is the heavy black wire and you're going to want to connect that to a chassis, an engine ground, or the battery negative terminal. And the MSD main power comes from the heavy red wire and you can put that to the battery junction terminal. Now the HEI connections are going to be different when we're talking about an MSD ignition in place. First you want to cut the stock three wire connector and leave yourself plenty of wire because you're going to put connections onto those three wires. And then the red B plus wire is going to be connected to the orange MSD wire. The center black wire is actually going to connect to an engine ground and that's a wire that you're going to have to wire in. And then there's the brown C negative that is connected to the black MSD wire. You're still going to use your vacuum advance, but now you can see in the bottom left here you have the magnetic pickup that is sticking out from 8861 that's ready to connect to the box. I'll start with the MSD magnetic pickup wires, and that's the green and purple wires that are usually in a black casing. And you're going to want to route that to the MSD8861 distributor connector that you previously wired into your HEI distributor. So the MSD ignition power is going to be that red wire, and that's going to be an ignition source. So that's going to get power from the ignition power junction, which gets its power from the ignition switch IGN terminal. And again, don't use the ignition resistor wire, that pink and black one that came factory on these cars. And the MSD orange wire is going to be the MSD coil positive wire, and you're going to connect that to the red B plus wire that came off from the HEI three wire connector. And next you'll want to grab yourself a 12 gauge wire and secure it to the engine. I secure mine to the intake manifold and then connect it to the black GND HEI three wire connector. That's that middle wire on that three wire connector. And next is the black MSD coil negative wire and that's going to connect to the brown C minus HEI three wire connector wire. And that completes the wiring for an upgraded MSD ignition on an HEI and internally regulated alternator wiring for Oldsmobiles from 1970 to 1972. I hope you all find this useful. I imagine this information can easily be transcribed to a 1968 and 69 Oldsmobile. And thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video.